In this video, I'm going to show you how to craft a sales presentation that sells without you feeling that you're selling and certainly without the person that's actually listening to the sales presentation feeling like they're being sold to. That's the key, right? No one likes to feel sold to. Now, the most important thing to mention about this before we get going is the idea of what a sales presentation is because many people, most people in fact, they think that they don't need a sales presentation or a sales presentation is standing in front of a group of people and making that presentation or doing a webinar. But really, a sales presentation could be anything from a webinar standing in front of people. It could be a 10 minute piece of content. It could be a two minute piece of content. It could be any type of content that's building a business. And let me elaborate what I mean. In any conversation, there's going to be somebody that's selling and somebody's buying, whether that's beliefs, whether it's, uh, I've got a son, Sam, my son Sam kept going below the sink and when my son Sam was going below the sink I kept saying to him Sam you, you can't go below the sink Sam you can't go below the sink and he didn't listen to me why did he not listen to me because I was trying to sell him the idea of not going below the sink when really what I needed to do was tell him a story and share an experience and talk through what happened to other people if they went through the sink. Now, in the case of Sam, I invented the story of Kevin the monster, right? Sam, Sam, have you heard about Kevin the monster? And he's like, no, no, well, who's Kevin the monster? I said, Kevin the monster, he hangs out a bit below the sink and do you know what happened to the kids? Now, maybe I'm a good, bad dad, maybe I'm a bad dad, I don't know. But all I do know is that when I invented this story, he stopped going below the sink. And when I kept telling him what to do, he never went below the sink and that is the key to this video and we're going to show you on ChatGPT. Selling is not telling. Just like with my son Sam, if you keep telling people in the feed when you're trying to sell any sort of service, any B2B service, diet, business to consumer, absolutely anything when you need to change someone's opinion, where you have to help people think differently, then telling them is the least effective way that I found to do that and oh let me just show you quickly on this we're going to go through all of these prompts hero story telling stories we're going to talk through all the different levels of influence how to why to and the most important of all their values we will cover all of that so let's jump in to chat GPT just so you're clear, I want everyone's time to, to be respected and I want you to know if this video is useful for you. It's gonna work for if, you, if you're selling B2B, B2C, if you're influencing, if you need to change any sort of behavior in any way, shape or form, which I would argue every single person does need to do. We'll show you a top level framework so you can implement it into any video. So let's, with, with that said, let's jump into the prompts. And by the way, the prompts are downloadable below the video, just click below. So. I think the best thing to do with this is, is to just run it as something we can all relate to. Now, I've, I've chosen here a leader of people in an organization who can't get his team to do stuff. That's a bit like a parent who can't get his son to do stuff. It's a bit like a salesperson who can't get his, his prospects to perceive him as valuable or her as valuable. It's for you if your prospects ignore you, you don't stand out and you need to get find a way in order for them to go, yes, this person speaks my language, this person is relatable. Oh, never thought of it like that because this is ultimately what influence is about. Let's just begin with the top 10 problems. So you just need the top 10 problems that your person would be dealing with and put them into chat GPT here. So what are the top 10 problems of a, a, a leader in, of people in an organization would deal with in team meetings that stop them emitting KPI? Top 10 problems, your client avatar, and by the way, we've got loads of client avatar videos, I'll link those later at the end. In an organization would deal with in a team meetings that stop them hitting KPI. So a scenario in their everyday life and the outcome they want. Here are 10 possible problems. All right, good. So these are the problems. L lack of accountability, resistance to change, poorly defined results. Okay, that's good. That's good. But the problem is with a problem. The problem with problems is problems don't speak to the root cause. What do I mean by root cause? A problem is different to a symptom. A problem is the root cause which your market may not have awareness of. And the number one, fund and if you take anything from this video, take this, the number one fundamental issue with a lot of content, a lot of sales presentations, a lot of pictures, a lot of videos, is there's a mismatch. 
they're talking about a problem when really they need to talk about a symptom. If you're talking about a problem and the client's thinking about a symptom, poof, they miss each other. So the client or the potential client is gonna have awareness of symptoms. They're probably not gonna the, know the root cause. You as an expert probably know the root cause. You know your field better than anybody. But the expert's curse is knowing things better than anybody because it gets in the way of, for, for me, it gets in the way of actually speaking on a level that's relatable, as I mentioned at the beginning. So all I'm gonna do, go is, let's go with X. A problem is different to a symptom. Let's go with two. Poor communication and a problem is different to a symptom. A problem is a root cause, whereas a symptom is what they think about. That's what it says. And you are correct. Oh, thank you, chat GPT. I am correct. A problem is a fundamental issue or challenge that needs to be addressed and a symptom is a sign or indication of this problem. They've put in words what I just described to you, but much better. The symptom on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, give me 10 symptoms. Give me 10 symptoms the team leader is aware of. Keyword for poor team communication. So we have the prompt set up, but sometimes we just go with it what they say. Lack of clarity, messages must be incomplete, lack of engagement. Oh, I like this, lack of engagement. It's that, comp that, that's a really, really good one to go with. So what are we gonna do with the lack of engagement? Let's ask chat GPT. Let's go with three. And again, all the prompts are downloadable below. What are some ways to deal with this? So what we're looking for here, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not going to teach how to, to deal with it. We're going to use that as an anchor point to use as a base to then determine how we teach. What, what do I mean by that? This is what they're doing right now. And if the chances are, if they're doing this right now, it's not working. In order to be effective communication, effective sales presentation, we need to take that and then we need to show that we have a different transformational way of doing things. Let me repeat, this is the baseline. This is what they're trying. And then we're going to build a hero story and a sales presentation around different ways to do it. This is the key point here, right? Encourage open communication, define roles and responsibility, effective communication channels. All right, give me some examples of free. We're gonna drill down on it, on this. Um, because I like the sound of that one. Three, would that include one-to-ones, right? Because every manager likes to do loads of one-to-ones to try and solve this problem. Here are some examples. Provide regular feedback. All right, I'm gonna go with regular feedback because everybody in a, in my experience, they're all doing one-to-ones, they're all trying to do feedback, you know, like the feedback sandwich, good feedback, bad sam feedback, good feedback. What's the communication sandwich? It's classic management thinking. And that's the point. It's like, if you're going to deliver feedback, give them some good feedback, give them some bad feedback, and then at the end, more good feedback. It's kind of a way that a lot of managers are taught to deliver things that people don't want to hear. So we're going to ask, what are the stages they would go through on five? if it was a one-to-one. -one. And I'm gonna go with the one-to-one -one meeting because I like to, when I'm building these presentations or a piece of content, I like to hook onto something they do every single day. If you're, if you're teaching about diet and changing your diet, it might be getting up breakfast, hook onto a moment in the day. If you're teaching about lead generation, it could be that moment when they sit down in their computer and like, oh, can't believe that I'm doing this again, I'm being ignored. If you are dealing with enterprise change, think about that moment when, when they're alone and they're like, oh, I can't believe I'm dealing with this, right? To try and solve it, it, well, it'll get me. So, okay, good. So we're getting a bit of a repeat loop. Let's jump into this. How would I, so we're just, here's the key point. How would I map that onto the hero story by Joseph Campbell as used by many Hollywood scriptwriters? So I once hired a Hollywood scriptwriter, the guy that helps um, Julie Roberts determine if the film that she's going to act in is, is a good option, if it has a good story. And he taught me a lot of stuff, but we haven't got time for all of that in this video, but here's the main point. He taught me about the hero story and his particular take on it for doing business online. And that's what I'm gonna put here, right? And we're gonna map the hero story because in every sales presentation, we need to be relatable. Um, people, what's a better way to say this? People always talk about the KLT, the no like trust factor. But if we break that down, it, it, everyone says it, but do they really understand what it means? To me, the, the KLT factor is empathy. That is to say, have you experienced 
what they're experiencing and gotten past it and can you communicate that in a relatable way and a very quick example of a conversation I had with a Hollywood scriptwriter about this before we, we, we put in this prompt here was I used to start my presentation with I hated my job I really couldn't stand it. My manager was mean to me, so I got angry and I resigned one day. And Michael said, whoa, 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 Mark, you, you, you can't say that. No one can empathize or relate to that, an angry young man. And I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, no one likes angry young man. Maybe you could deliver it like this. So here's me in my office and like many people, I just wanted to get a good life for my friends, my fa with a good life. I just wanted to create a good life for my family, be a present father, make an impact on the world and make enough money to, to feel comfortable and not worry about paying the bills. But I wouldn't get that. So do you see how there's two different ways to do that? So let's map the hero's story onto those steps. Joseph Cramble's hero's story. Yep, thank you, chat GPT. <laughs> All right, perfect. The call to the team. Right, perfect. So all we're going to do here for the first stage of the presentation, and let me just give you the stage of the presentation. The stages of, of the presentation would be outline the problem. And just like I just did with wanting to leave a job. So I'll give it another example. The team recognizes the meeting. Don't, so how would I do it in this way? Don't know about you. I wanted to become a manager because I wanted to help people fulfill their potential. I wanted to help them make more money. I wanted to further the course of a business I believe in. But it was just really frustrating because I used to go in these meetings and I would tell people to do things and they wouldn't do it. So then I started doing one-to-ones and they still didn't do it. It took up a load of time, right? And then you would, so you would just then go into the next stage and then on these one to and let me explain what I mean. On these one-to-ones, the team member may be initially be hesitant to discuss. The conversations got awkward. I didn't know what to do. I was sort of about leaving my job. I was doing all these one-to-ones. My team wasn't performing. I wasn't getting promoted. Problem, problem, problem. Symptom, symptom, symptom. Meeting the mentor, the team leader serves as a mentor. So then a mentor, met a mentor. There was always a mentor. Goodwill hunting, if you've seen Goodwill hunting, is a classic example of this. Or Star Wars, Goodwill hunting, he meets the mentor who teaches in physics. Star Wars, he meets Yoda, there has to be a mentor. But then I found this way to do things. Um, crossing the threshold. So basically, these stages four to seven, he's, they're breaking it down here in, in a, a lot of detail are lots of ups and downs and then it's almost lost. So in Star Wars the classic moment is in every movie there's a, there's a moment when the, the, everything's almost lost. So you build that into the story, um, reward the road back resurrection and you basically get the results. So that's a lot of information. You probably think that's a lot of information. So let's build that on. Please give me, okay, simplify this please. Yep, there we go. Exactly what we, we just said. The problem they've got, build empathy the ups and downs, and then the kind of the, um, the bringing it together at the end when they're successful. So your sales presentation and every video should start, well there's no should, are going to be more effective in my experience and according to all the books here, if you can outline at the beginning this, these basic story stages. Now, on to the next way how do we deliver it we, we need to deliver it in a way that they remember it so i'm going to ask it here give me some ideas for my framework name what's a framework name what what i always try and do and, and what i've had great success with when we're doing the, the webinars and we've done over 2.5 million cash collected as of recording through webinars and sales presentations is to anchor a hero story to a framework name what do i mean a hero story to a framework name just like a product, a product doesn't, you, your, your service or what you do is a product and it needs to, and, and if it's a service, it's very intangible and it's, it's very difficult for people to get their head around what you do if they, they can't anchor and associate it with something material. So just give it a name. That's, that's a very elaborate way of saying give it a name. Oh, I like that. So let's go with the Elevate Framework, the Elevate the Feedback Framework. The feedback elevation framework. Anyway, we're not going to go into it now, but you can get the idea. The elevate framework. All right, so now you've got your story, you've got your framework, and you're now going to do the, the, the thing that, that's done in all sales and press presentations. Let's imagine this. So you say, so here is the framework to get your team to do what they want without doing loads of one-to-one -one meetings 
without spending loads of time getting frustrated when you give them instructions and delegate tasks and they don't do it. And you can use the elevation framework to do this. And this is how it works. You talk them through the framework. And the best way to talk them through the framework is the story, obviously. But then they're like, oh, that sounds great, but. So what's the three objections? That's chat GPT. No need for marketing coaches in, 20, in, in, in the times we're living in, right? Lack of time, it's always time. These are called general objections, right? We'll go through these. But you can see here, lack of time and busy schedule is time. These are general objections. The generalized objections that almost everyone has in any offer or niche are time and money, right? So we'll do time and there we are, limited resources, money. So we would just go, let's go with lack of time. Let's go with 10. How would we get around this? Do, do, do. Yep, cool. All right. So in summary, and by the way, the document is going to be downloaded below. In order to great, build a great sales presentation, there's a hidden story in here at the end. So I'm not, I'm not just summarizing. Number one, understand the symptom, not the problem. Number two, understand how to give a story that creates empathy. Number three, learn how to connect what you do to a framework. And number four, deliver two objections. And the last part, and we're not going to cover this in this video, is again, going back to the beginning, selling is not telling. Stories are just one way to do this. And, and some people respond to stories. Analogies and metaphors are another great way to do this. And we just finished with that idea. And by the way, if you want to do a landing page using all these frameworks, these frame, using this same idea of psychology, I'm going to put a video up here. I hope that's been useful. Have a wonderful day.